Mass Effect Andromeda is nearly here. It is months away, and to celebrate, the folks at BioWare have another one of their ever-inspired, actually I really like this, Mass Effect Andromeda Initiative videos. They're the training videos that you've seen over the last few months, kind of getting you into the game, some of the viral marketing behind it. On the screen now, we have the Tempest and Nomad. It's labeled as number one, which I think is a little bit strange. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take you through it. First time I'm seeing it, it's legitimate. Cut off my thumb yesterday very legitimate so hopefully uh you know we'll get something great let's take a look here it comes the briefing glad to make your acquaintance recruit oh we got sam we got sam the pathfinder team will be flying with me i'm Calo jaff oh no i'm wrong i've been her pilot since the early prototype days gotta be a solarian gotta be a solarian Stealthy and easily the fastest ship in her class. Capable of doing 13 light Getting a Morden vibe. A strong, strong Morden vibe with this. Of course, all that speed comes with some sacrifice. She isn't weighed down by heavy armor or a main Interesting. Shot, but rest assured, anything we can't outrun will have a tough time. I do like the it. look. But all right, here we go. Here we go. Pathfinder team will call the Tempest home. All right, hold on. All right, let's take a stop here. We see multiple bunks. Always great. Oh, God. See, this stuff is great because there's moments like this before we played the game where we can look at this and say, wow, I'm going to be in this place a hundred times to talk to PB or Cora or something like that. So really, really excited. Not a lot to go on here. Uh, a little bit of terrestrial plant life. Some of the helmets from the initiative. Let's continue. Home is state of the art. Our research room is available for r &D. Ooh, I like that a lot. Really, really digging that. Kind of the bridge opening area. Love it. This will be the space for gathering intel and... Oh, cool. And working out their practical You remember in Mass Effect uh, 1, that was what, something you did a lot. And I'm sorry, we're kind of getting bits and pieces of them speaking. But some of my favorite parts was kind of the, the group meeting aspect that we had when we were uh, sending our results back to the council and they kind of lost that a bit in Mass Effect 2 and 3. This looks almost identical. All right, let's keep looking. Upgrading everything from weapons to armor to the Nomad. Okay, armor. so now we get to see the Nomad. It looks exactly like the toy that you can get. That's kind of amazing. I thought the toy, like, it almost looks like they dropped a toy in there. It's weird. More of the Andromeda Initiative uh, logo. What do you guys think of the logo? I don't know. I don't think it has the same pizzazz as N7. It looks kind of like like New Age Apple. I bet this organization's evil. All right. It's all supported by discoveries from the tech and bio labs. Okay, board. so we're seeing some of the bio labs here. Again, this is to do with the Andromeda Initiative, what we're supposed to do. I think that's the Nexus there in the corner and some other nondescript sort of buildings and uh, ships that you have very very similar aesthetic uh this could even be in game because we see here we have a bit of the compass at the very top which is cool the meeting room gives us a place to gather the crew okay so with the Nexus. i was wrong about that one the meeting room that area is the one that we just uh, saw is the one that I was referring to. That seems to be a different one, but I'm really glad they have that in here. The the core, Tali Zora. That's exactly where we met her, baby. That's where we had our love. Hello, our engineering, the Tempest's armory. Armory. Med Bay. A very good Mass Effect aesthetic. Really, really sticking to what we've got to see in the first three games. It, it looks exactly like uh, when we had the previous Doctor there. It looks exactly the same. I'm, I'm digging it. And the cargo bay. Tempest, cargo the bay. During your downtime, this is the crew quarters from before. The galley. The galley. The Pathfinder's cabin is also located okay, nearby. so now we have the Pathfinder. Oh, that's amazing. So clearly, Alec Ryder in the very first trailer was in this area I'm walking out. Oh, that's cool. Look at that bed, folks. Take a, take a close look. That is where some business will go down. Goodness gracious. Oh, man. I, I hope that maybe this is talking about streamlining things, that you don't have to go through five different levels to get down to where you need to go. It seems like it's pretty easy where you just press a button there and continue with it. Let's uh, keep going. But is off limits to the general crew. 
Okay, the okay, joke about getting banged. Uh interesting. So there's another little mini map area there. I really like the idea of um seeing the actual universe around you. So perhaps we choose something in the mini map area here, and then once it's chosen, you get the visceral effect of actually going and looking. I really, really hope that's it. Everything else seems pretty normal. Uh, bed, little sitting area that we'll never interact with. I hope they, they actually use these things in some sort of way. Don't see any fish. At least from this shot. No fish. Of course. My place is okay. on the bridge. This is where the Pathfinder operates our nav system. Synced specifically to them. Oh, that's cool. Any destination in the Helios cluster right at their Similar location. setup to what we saw in the Normandy, the uh, dual cockpits that used to have, of course, Edie and Joker. Uh, seems to be pretty similar. Once we verify ground conditions with our scanners, the Tempest will enter clipping the atmosphere, there. touch down, and the team will head out in the... So this is stuff we've seen before. This rover is the definition It looks like a toy. With twin hydrogen oxygen. Very much like a toy. An element zero core, independent suspension for each wheel. And Rest in oh. See? Where's my Mako at? She comes equipped with a I don't know. Injection boost I'm not enjoying that. And in any tight spots, helium three micro. You gonna bounce? Oh! It's got the bounce. It's got the bounce, baby. The nomad must be able to adapt to difficult conditions. The modularity of its design allows I don't know, this... Uh, shields, shield blast, it really does look like a matchbox toy. Jobs to be customized based on oh, cool. Customized paint jobs, that's something new. And most crucial of all is your ability to scan planet surfaces for valuable resources oh. and mine them with deployable mining drones. See, that's a small little addition, but that's kind of cool. So they really do want you to, to be able to actively explore and interact with the worlds with this little... That's neat. Have an entire galaxy to scout recruits. The next time I welcome you on board the Tempest, I hope to do so as crewmates. See you in Andromeda. Beow. That's always a great look to end on. And then, of course, there we have it. Not actual gameplay. Lies in deceit. So there we have another one done. The Tempest and Nomad. Didn't see a lot from this. We got to see the interiors of the ship let's take uh, another look just really quickly at some of the interiors can we move forward a bit no we can't so we got to see the inside of various parts of the ship they had the exact perfect positioning it looks pretty normal from what we've seen and can expect with the aesthetic uh, i'm digging his vibe too of our new ship's captain the first leading us i do like it i think he'll I really add something. I think they might be channeling a bit too much of Mortem with that. And uh, yeah, the Nomad looks like a little Matchbox toy. But the Tempest, if they streamlined, made it Aqualine, so you don't have to go through five different elevators to choose your destination, then go out into the Kodiak like you did in Mass Effect 3 to actually go out into your destination. Very, very excited about that. Um, yeah, we didn't get to see a lot here, unfortunately, but from what we saw, you know, it's just bits and pieces. Very excited that the machine of Bioware is very slowly giving us more and more information, letting uh, the curtain kind of go. We heard from Aaron Flynn before at uh, the CES that people just want one thing. 15 minutes of the game, beginning until a moment, and I am completely with that. If you give us that, I think most of the... Bioware people and uh, fanboys will have a brief moments of relaxation. But yeah, there you have it. Very simple, very easy. The Tempest and Nomad Andromeda Initiative video. Twa, there's three more of these to go. Likely, I'm taking my bets now. I've said it before in other videos. Jin Garson, the person that's doing this, some evil doing the foot. She's with the cat. I'm saying it now. And when you look back at this in a few months, Andy Brokowski said it first. All right, keep watching. You know, was there something in the video that you think I missed? You know, maybe some of the aspects of the Tempest that were actually pretty cool that I glossed over. Liked engineering. I, I'm, I guess overall, the most important thing is that it seems to be capturing a similar aesthetic that was introduced in Mass Effect 1, perfected, in my opinion, Mass Effect 2, and kind of lost a bit in Mass Effect 3, got a little muddy. There was many different areas to go to. It was very compartmentalized. It was hard to get to them all. 
Mass Effect 1, I think, did this best of just introducing the places you're going to go and making them places you want to go. I really hope that what I'm thinking is true, that you can just select your area on that little mini-map and then you go out and actually can see your ship traveling through the universe. That in and of itself might be something that players will lose their minds over. I can't remember a lot of games, No Man's Sky tried to do it, where you're able to see intergalactic flights in some sort of way or interstellar flights. That's what I love in sci-fi. And uh, yeah, other than that, not the biggest fan of how the Nomad looks. It just is very clunky. You think of the aesthetics of the Tempest and in the Mako in some ways and the visual stylings of inside the Tempest, there's an aqualine look. It's a lot of sharp edges from a design perspective. Then we deal with the Nomad, which is thick and clunky and has big ass wheels and and seems to be this kind of dirt rover. And uh, yeah, I think there's a bit of an inconsistency there, but honestly, splitting hairs at this point. Mass Effect Andromeda coming out soon. Uh, yeah, if I missed something, please tell me because I want to know.